everyone. To all of my returning viewers, welcome back to another Fusion Friday video. Now, for those of you that are new to my channel and my content, my name is Phil Brown. I'm with JitCAD Cam. We are an Autodesk reseller. So not only are we just a YouTube channel with awesome and amazing content, we also do provide support and services as well as selling Fusion 360. So before I jump into what I've been bugged at for a while now, creating, you know, five axis tool pass on turbine impellers or props, I'm gonna go ahead and say, don't forget to like, follow and subscribe. And now let's get to it. So as you guys can see, I'm already in the manufacturer work side of things. I am gonna treat this as if we're gonna do something on a lathe and then we're actually gonna throw it in a five axis machine. So as always, we have to go ahead and create our setup. As you can see, I have my XYZ. I am just gonna make this very simple to get this to the point in the meat potatoes that most of you are waiting on. And we're going to use a template to actually create my lathe programming. So if you haven't caught my actual video from Workflow Wednesday on how to do templates, you can speed up your workflow dramatically as you can see here, where we went in and we just copy and pasted something that's been working very well for us. So let's go ahead and create our next setup. Again, we're gonna do milling. I'm gonna define my Z and my X. Of course, I want my Z up in this case. We are going to use continuous rest machining, and that is coming from our preceding setup. Now, I could put this XYZ at the top if I had DFO or DWO or tilted work plane compensation. Now, if I didn't have that, I would also have to put that at this point of rotation with a joint origin. But let's get into this and let's start to rough out this part and see what we can come up with. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna start by actually going to multi-axis rotary pocket. I should have warned you guys out the hole, but you do need the machining extension in order to do any of this. Now keep in mind, you can get the machining extension from us. However, you can also go up here to the top, the extension button, and you could start your free trial. The good news is that the machining extension actually had a price change. It's no, no longer $1,600 a year. I believe it's $1,465 or $1,485 per year now. So with that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and grab my tool. We're gonna go in and we're gonna grab that quarter inch tool. I did do a little preparatory work on some of the tools to speed up this content so you guys can see how this works in real time. But we're gonna go ahead and kick on rest machining. And then we're gonna go to, you know, almost 90% of my tool. Let's go 0.23. And then, oh, three fingers are not working yet this morning. And then let's go ahead and do a step down of like 50. So again, I'm doing a lot of just preparatory moves here so that we can rough out this part as quick as possible. And you're gonna see that now based off our geometry and what's happening. So now that we have that roughed out, again, we could do a lot more step downs or a lot more passes. It's really up to you guys. I would actually come in on this and I think I would hit it now with a rotary pocket, or not a rotary pocket, but a rotary contour. What this is gonna do is just give me a secondary wrap around my tool path. Again, I could decrease my step downs even more if I wanted. All I'm looking to do is just get this down to a pre-finish so we could look at our five axis tool paths. So why that calculates, we're gonna go ahead and pivot and I'm actually gonna start with a swerf tool path. Now, I think a lot of people forget about the capabilities of a swerf when we're going in and creating these tool paths. So I'm gonna go and swap out to a ball end mill. I will warn you guys now, we are gonna get some warnings here about this is not a milling tool. It is actually is a milling tool. It's a lollipop tool. It's a pretty standard cutter, but don't worry about it. It does not affect the G code or anything that happens inside of Fusion. But we're gonna switch over to the geometry tab. Now in the geometry tab, I do like to use contour and contour pairs. And the best way to think about this tool path is you're guiding it with rails, right? It's kind of like a train track. So you have your, your rails on your train track and basically that's what guides the train. We're doing that with the end mill here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna pick my contour. So I'm actually gonna pick the lower contour first. So again, is the idea is, is always pick the lower one first. I'm gonna hold my Alt key here so that I only pick one edge. And that blue edge signifies the lower rail or the lower chain, right? So now I'm gonna go ahead and hold Alt again and I'm gonna pick my upper chain. You can see how that chain's a little short. So I'm gonna click it a second time and extend it out and hit OK. So again, we now have our lower and we have our upper for what we're gonna do. From here, we're gonna go ahead and switch over to the passes tab. We can go ahead and change our cutting mode. 
Again, I want to do everything from the bottom or trim from bottom. Now, this is gonna be something that you're gonna play around with. I'm gonna start with trim from bottom and then we're gonna look at just from bottom, right? So again, we have our maximum step down, very straightforward. I am actually gonna leave everything else completely default right now so you guys can see the outcome we're gonna get. And as I warned you, this is the actual warning we're getting. It does say that, you know, that ball end mill or lollipop cutter isn't a valid tool type for milling. But again, that's not going to affect anything we do. So as you guys can see here, we are now running up and down that actual fin of our turbine. And what we're doing is we're following that lower chain in and out, right? So again, is if you're doing this for a turbo impeller or a compressor wheel, you know, you are going to concern yourself a little bit with the direction in which these paths are creating, right? We want smooth flowing air. We also want nice clean finishes. But as you can see, it's not very difficult to get into five axis machining and to start doing some of this stuff. So let's go back and let's swap out that swerve. And we're going to actually go in and we're going to go trim from bottom. We're now going to go to from bottom. And what from bottom is going to do is as you're going to see is what it's always going to do is it's always going to go all the way down to the other end of the part. So if that means no longer making a step up or overlapping as you're seeing along this edge, this is a huge ordeal at the end of the day because, again, the idea is, is that we are going from end to end. Again, we're not really machining anything here, but we are tracing that down to the other end of the part. So again, based on machine time, retracts, Sometimes you gain a little bit from one tool path over the other. Again, it's up to you and the way you're going to go about this. But the idea that Fusion is actually handling all the five axes for us in a real time. So again, as if I wanted to simulate this here, let's go ahead and simulate this tool path. We'll give it a second. As you guys know, I am recording video on the same computer that I'm using for Fusion. For a lot of people out there, they always ask me, you know, what computer should I buy for Fusion 360? Well, I'm on a $1,500 laptop, guys. It's nothing fancy. It's right about the middle of the road that I suggest to most people. So as you can see, we're now running up that surface. Again, all the way out, we do our retract and reconfigure. And again, up and down, up and down, up and down. So it's basically repeated as we go down that surface, adding more and more to what we have going on. Now we could do some other things with this as well. So again, in Swerf, and a lot of people, I don't know why I forget about it even. I always think Swerf is the side of the end mill. That's not true. So we could actually lean our tool inside of Swerf as well. So we could lean that tool in any direction that we want. And keep in mind that's from perpendicular to the surface. So a lot of people just realize they, they want to do a 15 degree tilt. Well, you're 15 degrees from perpendicular. So it's almost 90 minus 15 that's happening. So again, as you can go in and you could add some lean angles here, you could also do what's called a blend top to bottom. And what a blend strategy is going to do, and we're going to see this more in some other tool paths inside of Fusion, but that blend strategy will actually fan across that surface. As you can see, we're only getting one single pass out of this tool path. I would have to change some more settings. But as a whole, as you guys saw, I'm really a fan of using Swerf on something like this to clean up that actual face, right? Now, we need to talk about the fillet and more or less the floor of what I'm going to refer to as the pocket of this turbine, right? So this is where we're going to pivot into a few other tool paths. And I'm actually going to go down into the geodesic tool path. Now, the geodesic tool path is extremely similar when you think about how it acts to swerve, right? Again, we're guiding a tool path with edges. This one just tends to be a little more automated out the hole, and I'll show you guys why. So as you can see, it's asking me for a surface to drive what's going on. In this case, I'm gonna go ahead and grab all three of these surfaces down here. Now, from that, we have our strategy, right? Scallop or blend. Let's just go ahead and leave it at scallop for now. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and change my maximum step over, and let's just decrease this down to maybe 25,000. So we're gonna leave this, and again, this is where a lot of tool paths start to pivot and change because there is a new five axis strategy out there. We're gonna leave this in three axis mode so it calculates extremely fast, but also we can just make sure we're getting, as you can see, the tool path on the right area of the part, right? So we left that as a scallop. It is doing a scallop tool path. So it's working on that outer edge inwards or inner edge outwards, I should say. 
And what that is going to do is just work like a normal scallop that if you've been using it for a while is in the standard library of Fusion tool paths under 3D. Now we can switch that up, right? So this is again, some neat things. So we can go in and we could say blend. And now what's going to happen when I hit OK is it's going to blend that surface from the top to bottom. So remember, we had a blend strategy also when we were doing our swerf. Now, again, what this is doing is fanning, right? Let's say it's making 100 passes. It's starting with a small width and going to a large width, which is going to fan it out or kind of do like a broom, the end of a broom, right? So again, it's a very powerful strategy to go back and forth and run down that part. And again, is in something like this, we want the flow of air and we want the lines and all of our toolpath marks to follow through. So I'm gonna go in and we're gonna play around with this just a little bit more. Again, this is why I do love the geodesic toolpath because in this case, if I just wanted to blend just this fillet, I could blend just that one fillet. Again, being able to do all kinds of stuff with this. Again, my tool might be a little too big for this or it might be spot on, but as you're seeing is I can get away with a lot with this toolpath with being able to do the entire bottom side of this part. Now, somebody's gonna ask, they always do, and this is why I love the comments, couldn't I just do geodesic across all of these surfaces? Yes, 100% guys. You could go in and you could grab all of those surfaces and you could try to do a geodesic toolpath across that. Now, another thing that we're gonna look at is now let's kick it over to five axis machining, right? So again, as I'm gonna go back and grab all three of those lower surfaces, we're gonna just simply toggle on five axis and hit okay. And what most of you are gonna notice is my tool is still vertical, right? And the reason for that is even though we turned on five axis machining, we have yet to actually define what we want the five axis machining to do. So let's open up Geodesic again. Let's go over and let's actually kick this over to lean and lead and let's see what we get. So as you're going to see, little by little changes are actually going to do quite a bit here. And I'm going to simulate this now. But as you can see, my tool is now actually turned the entry and exit arrows and we're coming in at an angle and then we're running up and down that surface and to simulate that and see what this looks like again we're going to go ahead and give this a quick second to pull up the machine simulation as you guys know this feels like forever when you're making these videos but now that we have this open we can go ahead and hit our play button and as you're seeing this guy come in and now we're actually doing some full five axis tilting up and down our part but one thing that is happening is we are getting collisions based on how it's trying to go in and run that toolpath great toolpath very terrible collision control at this moment my fault not the software so the nice thing is is we're seeing this all in real time so we can again go back into that toolpath let's get a little closer to our part here and lastly, in the multi-axis tab, you have the ability to kick on collision avoidance. Again, this is gonna be extremely helpful for not only avoiding areas where you're making contact, but even starting to recognize things like your undercut areas, right? So what's gonna happen now is it's gonna recalculate that tool path. And as you can see, it's now coming in at different angles to achieve what needs to be achieved. So lastly, we're gonna go ahead and wrap this up with a duplication of the Swerf tool path. Again, I really do recommend it. I really do like the idea of using Swerf for kind of like vertical walls. It makes my life much easier, so to say, but at the end of the day, again, using that Alt tab or that Alt key, we're gonna go ahead and pick our upper and lower chain. We do have our five axis turned on and things of that nature. Again, we're getting that warning, but as you can see, that Swerf tool path is literally chasing up and down those vertical walls. Very clean at the end of the day so that we can blend the upper and lower section of our part as much as possible. So, and again, based on how we're actually machining that is gonna make a difference and the adjustments that you need to make for that. Now, before I let you guys go, let's go ahead and get that model turned back on. We're gonna go ahead and throw one more tool path at this. Now, I didn't play around with it before throwing it at here, but you've probably seen this tool path before. It's one of my favorites when it comes to breaking edges on my part. So I'm gonna go in and we're gonna do a deburr tool path to finish things off. Now, deburr has a lot of different settings and a lot of different things we can do with it, to which we could actually go ahead and let it do its automatic thing right out the start. And I think that is actually what I'm gonna go for here and see what we get. 
Now, again, we're going to let this calculate. It will take a moment. And as you can see, it has automatically recognized almost all of the edges on my part in a three axis environment. But that's not good enough for me because we do have some areas that are undercut when you think in three axis that is going to cause some problems. That does remind me that if you guys did, and I should have said this earlier, but if you ever want to know what is going to be undercut, accessibility analysis is probably one of your best friends when you're looking at something from a three-axis mentality or a positional multi-axis mentality. So again, is the reason why that Debur toolpath isn't making contact in certain areas is because they are undercut and we're stuck in three-axis. Now, let's go back and change that, right? I actually think we might be able to get away with a lot based on a four axis kind of scenario. So we're going to go ahead and swap that out. And now let's see what we get based on four axis deburring. Again, we are able to achieve a lot more. We may be still missing a couple of smaller edges here and there, but we actually are looking very clean based on four axis. So again, this might, oh, no, nope, we got a little spot here that it looks like we're not actually able to achieve. So this is where we can, again, modify and adjust even more, going to full five axis even. If you wanted to, and again, this is up to each and every person out there, is we could even go in and we could select our edges that we only wanted to do, right? So again, the great thing with Fusion is, is you have the ability to define either what you do or you don't want to do when it comes to these edges and these areas on your part. So as you're going to see here, we're going to go ahead and grab just that section. Based on full five axis, of course, because this isn't a five axis machine. And then we could just deburr those edges. So in this case, I made a error here. Let me go back and readjust. So we need to do selected edges, not machine boundaries. Even the best of us make mistakes, guys. It is Friday. It's been one of them weeks. It's probably one of them weeks for all of you where you're counting the minutes until it's time to grab a beer and relax. So let's go ahead and swap out machine boundary for actual edge boundary, right? And now we're doing that five axis to burring up around this. So we do need to still do one more thing. And it did just occur to me as we got to this point is we need to actually do this all the way around our part, right? So as you can see, my deburr is in the wrong spot. Not a big deal. I would have moved that. Obviously, we concentrated on one area. But once you define what you want to do, let's go ahead and actually pattern this. And we're going to do a circular pattern around center. And I do know this is a instance of six. And just like that, we've actually taken one little area that we've done and duplicated it or patterned it in this case to match that all the way around our part, making this much easier and much faster, especially when you start to think about, you know, I need to modify this toolpath or I need to modify this toolpath. I don't have to do that six times on six different surfaces with six different sets of edges. So guys, it's not what you know, it's who you know. You all know myself, Phil Brown over here. And thanks to the new tool pass that Autodesk has been releasing and working on a lot, we are seeing that the capabilities is increasing. I am gonna start doing a lot more five axis content over time. Now, that being said is if you guys wanna provide me part files, there's an email down below as well. Don't forget to like, follow and comment and let me know whether or not you like content like this or anything else that you wanna see outside of this. Thanks. Have a great rest of your day.